Our next speaker this morning is Dr. William Chamberlain. Uh, he was born in uh, Maryland, undergraduate education with Dartmouth College in uh, Hanover, New Hampshire, and his medical degree is from Tufts Medical School in Boston. He did his internship at Montreal General Hospital, which is affiliated with McGill University in Montreal. Following his internship, Dr. Chamberlain spent three years working overseas. His time as a medical officer in Papua New Guinea exposed him to various bacterial diseases he would not have otherwise seen. He feels his experience with tuberculosis, leprosy, and mycobacterium ulcerans may have prepared him to more readily accept the possibility of another atypical mycobacterium uh, that could be the cause of an agent in Crohn's disease. And hypothesis first hypothesized 100, 100 years ago and resurrected more recently through the work of uh, Chiodini, Herman Taylor, and others. He did a fellowship in gastroenterology at Walter Reed Army Medical Center and completed 20 years in the service. His last time he was at Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, uh, trying to fathom the intricacies of the immune response to pathogenic mycobacterium. He's currently a, a practitioner of uh, gastroenterology at Texas Tech University in El Paso, Texas. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm William Chamberlain. I've got to introduce myself. I am a gastroenterologist. I'm fundamentally a clinician. And I was asked to talk on the human um, health concerns of mycobacteria may be impaired tuberculosis. Okay, um, I will do so. Now, when I, just as a quick introduction, uh, there are different levels of biology that we can discuss things on, the molecular, the cellular, the organs, and you can read through the list up there. I mention this because it's important that when we talk about something like an infection with mycobacterium avian paratuberculosis, which I'll refer to as MAP, um, we can talk about at which level it's, it's impacting on. Now, how are these vertical levels associated? I'm going to put a plug in right now for another passion that I have, and I welcome somebody, anybody, to come up and talk to me afterwards. And that's on the new science of complexity, complexity science, complexity theory. It's, uh, it's a concept that's, well, it's a new philosophy, essentially, of science that is um, affecting different disciplines. Really, it affects everything. And your university may or may not have the centers for, uh, for complexity studies right now. But it is a new, wonderful way to look at biological systems. Uh, and I, 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 I ask that any of you come up and talk to me, and perhaps uh, we can get you interested in the field. OK. Uh, now, the level that I'm going to talk on is, is I'm not going to talk on the biosphere. And I am woefully inadequate to talk on the molecular levels, although I'm trying to read on them and at least follow the discussions. I'm going to talk about the impact on the human whole organism. Um, looking at the audience, I was trying to figure out how best to, to direct this talk. And I realized that Tim Bull was going to be talking yesterday. He did a wonderful job, so I'm going to try and, and ad-lib and fit what I say into what he said and refer to a lot of the really basic raw science that he was, that he was dealing with. Um, now, there's two things that I want to make perfectly clear. I have my biases. Okay, and my bias is that one of the causes of the Crohn's syndrome is mycobacterium avian paratuberculosis. It is not the only cause. I have to assume that there are other causes. I don't have good proof that there are other causes, but it makes sense that there is, especially when you see how subjectively and loosely gastroenterologists are in, in defining and labeling patients with Crohn's disease. Now, when I talk about Crohn's, the way I organize my, my thoughts the way I'll organize this lecture is the way the textbooks are organized. We'll give you a definition, the etiology, the pathogenesis, the symptoms and signs, quickly the differential diagnosis, the diagnosis, and the treatment. Uh, so this is, this just follow, follow this through. First of all, uh, the definition of Crohn's disease. It's an idiopathic, meaning we don't know what causes it, chronic inflammatory disease of the gut. So does that really say much? No, no, it really doesn't. But I want to say that it's a syndrome. It's not a given disease. 
It's a syndrome that the clinician makes the diagnosis and say, man, sir, you've got Crohn's disease. It's not the radiologist, it's not the epidemiologist, it's not the pathologist. It's the clinician who puts the whole pattern together and, and diagnoses it as Crohn's disease. As such, depending on the clinician, depending on his background, depending on his prior biases, depending on a whole host of other things, you can have a wide spectrum of uh, disease manifestations that get labeled as Crohn's. There are no specific tests for Crohn's. We've got semi-specific tests for MAP, but not for Crohn's disease. Again, it's pattern recognition. And what are the patterns? Well, the patterns are somebody that comes in with clinical symptoms, and those symptoms are, Doc, I'm not feeling well, I don't know what's, what's going on, very nonspecific, to very, very specific of, Doc, I've got this fistula and feces is oozing out the side of my abdomen. Wide, wide, wide spectrum, and that's what the, the point that I want to leave you with. Uh, when you get the history, do the physical examination, cursory labs, and then start imaging the gut, you see abnormalities. And what abnormalities do you see? You can see just diffuse inflammation, but more so sporadic inflammation, isolated inflammation. You've got localized areas of involvement and then right next to it, normal looking mucosa. This is critical because the other inflammatory idiopathic bowel disease that we label as ulcerative colitis has it, the inflammation is contiguous that starts from the anus and heads northward from there to involve the entire, well, different parts, segments of the colon all the way up to involve the entire colon. Ulcerative colitis does not involve the small bowel. So when you're seeing the inflammatory process in the small bowel, the clinician who makes the call calls it Crohn's disease. Um, Okay, now there are extra-intestinal manifestations of Crohn's disease. Those are, appear to be immunologic in, uh, in association. They have to do that with inflammation of the eyes, joint pains, um, skin manifestations, erythema nodosum. Uh, now, erythema nodosum is you get, you get painful, warm, red swelling, most often on your shins. Um, I saw that when I was in New Guinea, and that's why I had that in my introduction. Um, when you start treating leprosy, you'll often see, and I will say often see, erythema nodosum leprosum, erythema nodosum associated with leprosy, as the immune system comes back, as you get an immune resurrection, if you will, with the treatment. I'll say that because that's what I think we'll, we'll see a lot in, in treating, when I treat my Crohn's patients with antibiotics, I will see an immune reconstitution syndrome. Okay, so what about the etiology? Uh, there are different hypotheses, and, and I'm biased. Uh, at what level do you make the call and say something is a causal agent for an infectious disease, say, or for a disease. You can argue that you can, ne you can never prove causality. And so I will submit to you that what you have to do is go by what are the probabilities of, of it being a, the true causal agent, whatever truth means, um, and how effective is that in predicting uh, treatment as you, as you treat that. For me, I believe that MAP is one of the causal agents of the syndrome. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some of the reasons why, but, but you saw with Tim Bull last night, and I thought he, you know, he just did a sensational job. So I believe that, that MAP is one of the causal agents. In what percentage of patients, I don't know. The intricacies that are involved in the disease process, I don't know. I am open to all sorts of discussions. I don't know if MAP predisposes to other infectious agents coming in and serving as the antigenic stimulation, or whether the immune system it gets fired up and, and, and suppressed and then comes back on localized areas.